Hello, hello. Welcome back to the big board. Thanks for checking in with us here, or with me here. It's really only a me and the occasional writer. No one else is doing videos at the moment. Love to have some more people do that. That'd be awesome. All right, let's look at the Battle of the Bulge, 1944. This is Enemy Action Arden, Volume 1, interestingly enough. So maybe there'll be more games. Who knows? So interesting game because it has a allied solo game a german solo game and a two-player game and it's uh you know designed by butterfield so he's a gaming god so i've got to be careful about design game designer god so i've got to be careful about what i say about what i think about the game and i haven't even as you can tell i haven't gone anywhere yet so i really have no opinion but i'm just recording this little moment here to express a little confusion and bemusedness can we be bemused i think or bewilderment as to how combat works and i want to explain that by doing this so <clears throat> we we run an activation card over here and then i'm allowed to uh, flip a, a tactical card another card which i assume comes from my hand not from the draw which is a little unusual but that's okay let's well it's not unusual it just is what it is but so I get this fixed artillery thing, and uh, that's going to give me some benefit when these chits are drawn. You don't roll any dice to resolve combat. That's kind of the first thing that bugs me a little bit, but that's okay. We can pull things out of buckets. And uh, what we do is we, we elect, uh, there's a minimum number of chits we pull, which is going to be two, based on the number of steps for this little American chap down here. See the two little white dots means that he has he is green, not experienced or veteran, etc. or elite, but green. So we're gonna pull two chits. So we did that, pull two chits. Didn't you know get all the stuff I wanted to happen happen. And so I was keep you know keep reading through the rules. And the the combat description section is one page with uh, one, two, three, like seven sections in it. And so then it says, well, there's a minimum, which is the, the two, and there's a maximum, which is uh, the number of steps that the attacker has. So we've got a green unit here, and we got uh, uh, you know a, a regular unit here. So there's six more that could be involved. It was actually like this, but we then said, "Hey, look, let's experiment and let's add this into it and see what happens." And so I went through and I thought, "Well, I'll pull some more chits." And it doesn't say whether I have to elect to pull some or all of the extra chits it just says you there's a maximum so you pull all this stuff and then uh, you look at which side applies because each of these chits has two sides so defender if there if there was defender artillery if the tactical result there's a tactical card that gets pulled for these guys as well if that had had artillery on it and then the first turn you don't do that but if it had had artillery on it then we would have gone eh well, attacker artillery or defender artillery, artillery, which one applies? And then I go and look at this combat chit uh, <clears throat> summary and work out what goes on. And so the combat factors don't really come into play as far as I can tell, except for if there's a combat ratio on the result set, which there are none here. But if we look over here, we can see some other combat results, which got me to thinking. How many, uh, you know, D1s are there? How many A1 D1s are there? How many A2, uh, A1 D2s are there? And how many D2s, D3s, and whatever else? And so you, these guys all have backs, so then I would have to look at all the backs as well, and we would work out what... I, I'm curious if anyone's done an analysis of what the spread of results are and how they map into what we would consider a typical CRT, or if that's even worth considering because of all the chits I pulled four of them had uh, no value to the situation but four did so you know one took care of the IP and proof position and then three more are going to uh, so well this is attacker artillery that may not be good hang on yeah, Defender Artillery, Attack Artillery. Okay, so that counts. As, that's okay, that counts. And Defender was green, so they so there's three. And then we would look and see what that uh, that result 
would give us. It's going to be, an, that's three hits that, that's going to be applied to this unit. And then we would assess uh, assigning hits to defending allied units. Apply one at a time. So we knock out, uh, uh, well, uh, if they've already, already retreated two hexes, we would lose a step. If the number of hits is greater than uh, steps in defending unit, treat one hex, blah, 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 blah. So we go through and we look at all this, so all these little procedural steps, I guess. So it's a quite an involved exercise. That's one attack. This may be a relatively slow playing game. And I'm wondering how this will play opposed because uh, you're going to have to think about how many these are you going to allocate to your maximum number because there's a there's probably there's a penalty here somewhere for this too because as you the more did you pull the greater the chance is going to be that you're going to get one of these a1 d1 results let's see there's two four six eight ten twelve fourteen sixteen seventeen out of the six eight 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34. So there's, you know, every bit of 50 chits here. So uh, that's a decent percentage chance that you're going to end up with a, a result that's not going to be beneficial to you. So you've got to try and choose the minimum number you think you'll need to get a result that will move this unit out of the way or kill it, as the case may be. That's all I got to share with you at the moment. We're going to keep playing and see what happens from here. It's our very first activation. I'm very curious about the game. I like the way the rules read. I like the way we've got lots of little charts and bits and pieces to help us out. And there's some player aids that help consolidate some of the information that's kind of scattered through the rule book. Uh, I think the, uh, the, the color designations on these, these cores is off for every in the cards and the counters are not the same color and that's to me that's problematic because i look at this and go okay it's the uh it's this this color whatever that is core and i look at the map go, eh, no it's not i've got to look at the uh, roman numerals and then work out which guy that is all right gonna let you go talk to you soon we'll have more on this game as we uh, progress